Good morning everyone and Merry Christmas. So as some of you may know if you watched Vlogmas's past, my mom and I do kind of like a hybrid North American and European Christmas in that we do celebrate on the 24th. Usually if we're gonna have like a really big decadent meal, we will do it on Christmas Eve. But um, because I grew up in Canada, we still do do the whole like opening presents the morning of the 25th. And I really love this as our tradition because it means that both days are super exciting the 24th is like all anticipation and super full stomach um, and then the 25th is all about like presents and finally getting to give my mom her presents and it's all so much fun even lady has presents so yeah we have a reservation at the Halakulani at um, Orchids restaurant on Waikiki today at noon so my mom's just finishing getting ready and I'm wearing my Eliza J dress I think this one is still available and on sale and I have to say guys I'm obsessed with it I like it so much more than self-portrait dresses I've tried those on before I just don't love them that much I don't like the way they have sheer panels but this one is not sheer at all and it has the perfect amount of nude so it doesn't feel like too much like it's still very red but I just love the neckline like the detail on it and the quality of the lace is amazing so I'm so happy with this I knew that I would love it but you know, you're always a bit nervous shopping online and it arrived and I think it's perfection. I'm gonna take you guys along with me to Waikiki and then the itinerary for later on is we are going to do Christmas present wrapping together and I'm going to answer as many questions as I can from Instagram. Um, a lot of you ask questions, there's like I think over 80 now, maybe it's like 100 by now. Um, so, so many questions and I'm really excited to answer as many as I can while I wrap presents for Joe and my mom because as always I have procrastinated until the last pop possible second for wrapping. I don't know why I do this but it's now come to the point where like it's vlogmas tradition that I wrap on Christmas Eve anyways. I don't know I, I took my watch off so I don't know what time it is. <laughs> I'm on vacation. So we're at the Halikumani. Are you hungry mom? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's a huge buffet, right? So yeah. I have no breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really, really hungry. But I'm excited to be here. This is my favorite like, luxury <coughs> hotel. First plate, so we started with appetizers. They have quite the selection of salads. So here is my overloaded plate with a little bit of sushi, a little poke, and then some vegetable salads. My mom has a much more organized and ladylike plate. And then here is the beautiful view, main thing I wanted to show you. So stunning, perfect day. And over there is Diamond Head. So we're taking a little break between courses and I wanted to share. I know, yeah, we take our time with buffets. Yeah, I wanted to share with you a little known fact, which is this restaurant is called Orchids. And so, how old was I? Like the first time we came here. I was really little. I was definitely younger than 14. I think it, it was like 12 or something like that. It was really young. Um, and they have all these orchids everywhere in the restaurant. The restaurant is named, named Orchids. When you check into the hotel, they usually have orchids in your room as well. And they don't quite have the big ones that I recall, but you can see with these guys. I'm just gonna zoom in as much as I can. There we go. The inside of the orchid there is this really pretty soft violet. It's not like, it's not a really bright violet and it's got a little bit of like kind of pink tones to it. So when I designed my first round of Nouvelle Apparel scarves and decided on the colors, this is what it was inspired by. So if you, one of you guys has a Nouvelle Apparel scarf in Hawaiian orchid, then you can see it's little like story and if you don't yet I have like a dozen left of them so they're still fun. I really like naming my scarves and my line after places either that I've been or that I want to go. So this is one of the special like places in my heart. I'll show you my mom's beautiful <laughs> outfit of the day. Do you want to talk about your dress? It's your favorite place to get dresses right? 
phase eight. <laughs> yeah, so it's an English brand. Which department store do you buy them uh, from? Debenham, House of Fraser, there's a few of them. John, John Lewis? Lewis has so them. all of them, basically? Yeah, no, not okay. all of them. They have their own website, but they're usually more expensive. Yeah, it's really pretty. They're always so flattering mm -hmm. and just really pretty prints as well. Yes. And then you're carrying your then brand new handbag. Handbag. It's so cute. <laughs> so cute. Are you happy with it? Yes. And then pretty shoes from Macy's, right? Yes. Yeah. But not it, but we don't have any coffee yet anyway. No, but no, we, have, we do have a spoon with the coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are spoon blessed. Because we need this for our panna cotta. Um, let me show you what I got for dessert. So this is the infamous Halikulani coconut cake. I think it's infamous. It's kind of a big deal. It's their secret recipe. Um, chocolate strawberries, obviously. Papaya, so good in Hawaii. And then this is the panna cotta that we needed the little spoons for. It's actually getting quite warm. Meet my new beach bag guys. I'm actually getting like a new one. This is a display one. I really like this hotel. And so my mom treated me to a beach bag, which is so sweet. Oh, they gave me a nice carrier bag. That's so nice. Yeah, so we're gonna head out now. Have a little walk around Waikiki, a little digestion walk. I'm so stuffed. I'm so stuffed. I know, me too. And then, oh, that's so cute. Yeah, it's so cute. Yeah, it's a really nice little gift shop. Yeah. Yeah. It's wrapping and Q&A time. So the first one's super easy. It's just a little toy for a lady. And it's already what I would consider nicely enough wrapped. Um, I don't think poodles particularly appreciate fancy wrapping. So I'm just going to put a label on it so that my mom knows that it's for her. And let's start getting through some questions because there are so many. I cannot possibly get through all of them. Um, where's my phone? So um, basically the common theme amongst most of them is that they are about like my family or my upbringing, where I grew up, um, things like that. So I'm just going to tell you the story of my life and we'll get through most of those questions hopefully that way. Um, but let me pick off at least a few of the other kind of more random ones. So I'm seeing a lot of questions as to whether or not I would ever consider making my jewelry design and fashion design my full-time job. And the answer is sure, yes, it's been my long-term passion, but for now, I really don't see myself like really giving up law entirely for the next few years. I feel like I've worked so hard to get where I am and I still really enjoy my job. So sometimes it's tough to balance everything, but I make the best of it. And as long as I can still do that, I still see myself with one foot on each side um, because I really enjoy that. And I do have those different sides to my personality, like the analytical side and the more creative side. But some Day, I'm sure you know if I have a family something is gonna have to give do I have any gray hair not yet um, but if I do would I dye my hair yes I have a secret desire to become a blonde if my hair goes gray I know that sounds really insane would you guys still watch my videos if I was blonde I hope you would um, I would make sure that it looked really good and if it didn't I would go back to brunette but anyway where does my love of fashion and style comes from definitely from my mom um, but also from my grandma too she passed away when I was really little so all my memories of her of her being like so stylish and even when she was really sick she would always um, put herself together and put her face on as she would call it So I think she definitely really inspired my love of makeup and my mom inspired more like my love of fashion and jewelry um, As I grew up my favorite movie or show of all time. Oh my gosh My most funny movie ever would be Mickey Blue Eyes. I think that movie is hilarious um, favorite movie? Oh, definitely Sabrina. And I love the Audrey Hepburn version and the version with Harrison Ford. Um, both of those are amazing and super inspiring for style. Best tip for throwing a dinner party? Take care of yourself before you can take care of your guests. So make sure that you've had something to eat, hopefully a little drink as well if you do drink and you know, you've gotten yourself ready so you can feel good welcoming people when they get there. 
Do I like being an only child? Yes, I do. I love having my mom's undivided attention. I don't mind sharing with Lady. Why have I always loved pearls? That's a really good question. So my grandmother loved pearls and my mom loves pearls too. So it's definitely partly inherited, but I think even just thinking of what pearls are, that they're natural and they're from the ocean or from fresh water, that they're created by um, shells, to me is very like mermaidy and inspiring and just fantasy like and I love their shine I think they really enhance your beauty rather than distract from it so that's really like those are all characteristics I love about pearls do I see myself doing more Zara hauls the past collections for the like fall and winter from Zara have sucked so yes but only if it gets better what country or city would I like to visit and why? Okay, quick fire, just the ones I can think of. I would love to go to Greece. I went to Argentina briefly years ago. I would love to go back. Um, I want to go back to Tahiti. That's one of my favorite places in the world. Amazing there, and they speak French too, which is a nice perk. Um, loved Australia. I would go back in a heartbeat. Um, new places that I haven't been would be like Greece, Portugal, um, so would love to go to Ireland. Um, I feel like I have a lot of Irish friends, but I've never actually been there. Another question, what is one high quality clothing item or accessory that you believe every woman should have in their closet? Really good question. Um, oh, such a hard thing to pick. I feel like a really good blazer. I've had some of mine for so many years. So a really good blazer. And then, I mean, I have to say handbag, just a good quality um, like leather handbag made out of really soft leather is a must. I feel like it's one of the first things you notice about people is your handbag and shoes and they don't have to be expensive, they just have to be good quality. So last year we had a little gossip mess I feel like about Joe. So if you want to hear how I met Joe and our story and things like that, then definitely check out I feel like it must just be Christmas Eve last year because that's when I wrapped the presents. So um, go check that out because I, you know, I don't want to gossip about him excessively on my channel because I feel like that will make him kind of uncomfortable. He's not much of an attention seeker. Um, so yeah, go check that out if you want to hear about how we met. But it was, uh, what is that, a year and a half ago now? Yeah, a little bit more than that. We've been living together since March, I think. All right, so that's Lady's Gift. As you can see, I'm making amazing progress. One label. Um... Okay, I feel like I've answered all of the like very specific questions and then everything else pretty much relates to like my family and like life story and upbringing. So I'm just going to tell you guys about that rather than kind of like repeat things a lot. So while I do that, I need to wrap some of the presents. So these are the gifts from my mom. They are so cute. They are little bag charms. And I'll show you properly tomorrow because I cannot unwrap these and show you properly now. They're like totally sealed. So but here we go. Life story. Feels like a lot of information for one vlog. But you guys asked. So I'm going to answer. And I really have no secrets by the way. Like um, I have not been like trying to hide any of this information. It's just like not all of it is super happy and upbeat so I don't tend to talk about it that much in videos because I don't really think about all of it that much you know it's just like who I am so I was born in New York City when my mom was working there in 1988 that's my birth year and so what you guys have to realize is not everybody has a nuclear family and Families, in my opinion, can have any kind of look or size or personalities or numbers of people. So it might be really small, it might be really big. For me, it tends to be, you know, has always been really small. So um, that's definitely the case for me. And I really try not to make any assumptions of other people's families because not everybody has, you know, two loving parents, one male, one female. That's just not the case. Um, and so it's not the case for me because I have always had a wonderful loving mom and I had a wonderful loving godfather who unfortunately 
passed away a few years ago and I'm really not ready to talk about that a lot not because I'm hiding anything just because I'm still kind of grieving for him but he was a very special person in my life and I was incredibly lucky to have him in my life because he was not obliged to be in my life he was not genetically related to me he just took on the responsibility of being a godparent and the way that looked for us was that he really was a father figure to me because my father really had no interest at all in being a parent or any of the responsibilities involved with that and my mom chose to sort of let him off the hook and so as a result of that I've never had any contact with him because he has never wanted it so we just have never ever gotten to know each other I just you know I know of him and that's about it so he's French and to my knowledge he lives in Switzerland and that's really it for that you know um my point of view of it is i never really thought like talk or think about it because you can't really miss something that you've never had so i miss my godfather so much but i don't really miss my dad because i've never known him so yeah it's kind of like it's a sad chapter i think mostly for my mom rather than um for me but it's definitely something that has plagued my life in that so many people just don't understand how that can be but um it's just been my life and really you know happen to anybody and not everybody is going to have that perfect family but i think my mom um really instilled in me um, just a lot of strength in how to make the best out of whatever life hands to you and so she definitely made the best out of the situation that she was put in and yeah it got me an amazing godfather I had an amazing grandmother until she passed away and mostly you know I've just had my mom and both of us are really really close I think partly as a result of that and it's just made us both really strong and resilient and I think kind of knowing different things like that about my life maybe might help you guys understand where a lot of like my motivation and perseverance kind of comes from because so um anyway my mom left new york um after she gave birth to me because she just wanted some more support from her family so she went back to belgium worked there for a few years and then we emigrated to Canada as a family with my grandma um, in the early 1990s when I was just a pretty young toddler and I grew up in Montreal until I was 10 years old. Unfortunately my grandma passed away when I was really little after like a few years after we moved to Montreal and then we moved over to Victoria, Vancouver Island in British Columbia and that is where I you know spent the rest of my formative years and went to high school and high school was really really hard so a lot of you guys ask like if I ever have moments where I'm just like depressed or down or like have really big struggles and the answer is other than like you know kind of normal breakups that I've had in my 20s the hardest part of my life was really high school because I was so so unhappy in high school it was really hard I was bullied for a number of things i think the number one reason for it if there can be a reason for bullying which i really think there isn't necessarily but if there was it was definitely because i had a single parent and i didn't really conform to like that norm that everybody kind of expects in really old-fashioned kind of places so um, it was a really good school but it was a really hard time for me and so I just wanted to get out of there so badly just having a single parent and being foreign as people called me there um, just having like I don't know a bit of a different background um, made it just really unpleasant so I was very eager to get out of there and I worked my little tushy off to get amazing grades so that I could get into like any schools I wanted and just go somewhere else like one way ticket was my aspiration um, for graduating high school I will never forget guys and I'm saying this as a message of hope actually I hope you guys can understand it that way because that's how I mean it um, I will never forget being backstage prior to accepting my high school diploma I had like honors and everything so happy with my grades 
Um, I was, I think at that time I'd received my high school grades and I hadn't received all my IB grades, like my final IB grades yet, so I was still on tender hooks for that. But one way or another, I knew I'd graduated. And everyone around me, all of my peers, it was a really small class, so like all like 50 something of us, um, every single person around me was crying and in tears and hugging each other and they were so sad to graduate. I think it was mostly coming from a place of fear. Like I really can't speak for them. I don't know what was going on in their heads, but I think that was what it was really. And for me, how I felt was just pure ecstasy. I just was so excited to leave these people and that school and that um, just um, small mindedness behind and I was sure like nervous to leave home and leave my mom and like leave everything that I knew behind but I knew in my heart and I was right that whatever was coming was gonna be better it just it had to be better so I just remember that feeling and it was just this incredible rush and motivation that whatever hard things I had been through whatever was around the corner was gonna be better and I definitely had that feeling again after that, but not as strongly. And yeah, I am so glad that, you know, I made the choices that I did um, in a kind of unafraid way, um, wanting to seek out something different and discover, you know, like just less small-minded people and people who just came from all different backgrounds. And so I did get to do that. I went to university in England. I picked like pretty much the farthest place I could go. Um, my really like the choices I had narrowed down, I was either gonna go to law school in Australia or in England. So I really, I was trying to go like as far as I could, but somewhere I would still feel comfortable and get a law degree in the common law um, so that I could come home if I wanted to after and just have a degree that would be used, that I thought would be useful. So exactly what I did. Um, and I went to Durham University in England because I just liked um, the collegiate structure there. And when I went and visited, I took a gap year to decide where I wanted to, to go to university. I worked for part of that gap year. I feel like it was just like a really good growing up year for me. And um, yeah, I fell in love with Durham. I was there for three years and it was almost unbelievable to me how I could finally just like be myself. And there were so many people there that even if some people didn't like that, you would find friends who did, right? So like you just find your people. So yeah, I was at Durham University. Then when I graduated, by the time I'd done that, I was kind of, you know, I'd had my adventures away from home and I kind of did miss Canada already and knew that I probably wanted to continue my career over in Canada. Um, and so I decided to move home and started to like research what that would be like and what I needed to do in order to practice law because I was pretty sure I wanted to at least try and practice. I had already interned in London for a summer and I liked that experience. So yeah, the next step was I got an offer to go to the University of Toronto. I had offers for multiple masters around the country, but U of T seemed like the best option because I never lived in Toronto. I wasn't sure whether I might want to work on Bay Street or, um, you know, I just really wanted to keep my options open and um, it was also the most appealing program for me in terms of like the programming and the classes I could take because a lot of master's degrees you have to just write like a book basically and you don't take any classes and so I liked that at U of T making a mess um, I could go ahead and take some classes and write a smaller thesis and that was really appealing to me so I did that it was just a one-year program and um, graduated from there and by the time I graduated I still had some NCA exams so those are the conversion exams you have to take in order to be able to train as a lawyer in Canada and do your articles so I did those. I got an articling position at a private practice firm that's like a national firm. So that was really exciting. It was like a really prestigious firm and um, it offered the opportunity to try all kinds of different areas of law because I wasn't sure what area I wanted to practice in. So 
um that was really exciting when i got that offer i remember that was like such an exciting moment in my life bit of time where i had really nothing to do before um, starting my article so i went off to hong kong and i worked there for a few months so i think having told you all those experiences i'm hoping you can start to kind of see how i kind of I've always wanted to seek out experiences that would teach me something and I've always been very motivated at all times to just kind of um, learn more and um, experience new things and just kind of broaden my horizons and I've definitely had setbacks along the way. And so then what ended up happening is I trained in Vancouver, did my articles and decided that private practice really was not for me, that I did not enjoy it as much as I thought I would. So eventually I made the transition into um, the regulatory sphere and moved into an in-house counsel role. And I'm still in that job. Essentially what I do is securities regulation. So I call myself a, secure, a corporate and securities lawyer. That's what most of the classes and specialization and advanced classes I took were um, and I'm still in that job and the reason for it is that it really affords me the opportunity to just have a career that I'm passionate about and proud about but also um, have the time to really be able to pursue other interests and for me that has been having my own business and having my YouTube channel and being able to have enough time to have creative energy which I think is really hard if you're working really long hours even if you have that creative side of your personality if you just don't have the time then it can be impossible so you know, one of my recipes for success is to create a situation for yourself where you're going to be able to do the things that you want to do. And I think I have more energy than some and I'm very motivated, but I'm also very practical. And so I know what's possible and what's not possible and what I'm able to achieve in the time that I have. And I'm very happy and very proud with the things that I've been able to achieve in the time that I have. And I think that's only going to get bigger and better as we go along, so. Alright, first present wrapped for Joe is a Vince sweater because the piece of wrapping that I cut for the Patagonia jumper was insufficiently big, so I have to cut a bigger one now. Um, so what haven't I answered in telling you the story? I think a lot of it speaks for itself. Um, just to tell you a bit about my family background, my mom, so I, I told you guys my dad is French. My mom is half Belgian and half Italian. My grandmother was Italian, so I, I feel like I have a strong influence on that side, certainly food-wise. Um, Unfortunately, I do not speak it. I wish I did, but I do speak French from my mom. Um, I grew up in Montreal, but even if I hadn't, I feel like my mom still would have had like a French-speaking home environment for me. So when we moved over to Victoria, we still spoke French at home, um, and it was something that I was very, very much teased on, um, and oftentimes not in a very nice way. Um, so... But growing up, even though I may not have been super grateful for it at the time, um, I'm so grateful for it now. You know, I've been on some files actually where that's been like a really pivotal skill um, because on the west coast of Canada, not that many people um, are fluent in French. So it's not useful to me on an everyday basis, but it's useful once in a while and so i'm really grateful for it culturally as well um and yeah it's funny right like sometimes you can't really see those sorts of things when you're a teenager or be um appreciative of them but eventually i think you come to be so oh, yeah that's really me guys um oh there's one more thing in there so after we moved from Montreal and before I started high school and started to really, you know, get into the academic side of things and I really threw myself into that because I knew my social life was just going to always be non-existent anyway. Um, so all I wanted to do was to work hard so I could get out of there. 
that became my mindset in high school. I still did a lot of cool stuff like extracurriculars because I knew that would look good on university applications and those were things that I found to be a good outlet. Um, so I did a lot of theater. Um, I directed a school play. I stage managed a different one. I wrote some plays as well. That may be something you guys don't know about me. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that before. Um, I wrote a couple of plays and um, they were not recognized by my school at all, but I entered them into a competition and two of them actually got staged um, different years and that was amazing. That was like another one of like my top life experiences. Before all of that happened, I also apprenticed at a jeweler's and I have mentioned to you guys um, that that was a really, really um, wonderful experience for me as well. It was an amazing creative outlet. I feel like he was very chilled out having a young teenager in his atelier he just kind of let me play with his tools and come up with sketches and he would occasionally tell me that something is like just not feasible to make but um rarely so and so i really learned um what you could do and how far your imagination could take you um i made a few pieces most of them are in my opinion quite ugly but my mom still has them and it just taught me a lot about jewelry making and it took my knowledge to the next level because before that even i had sold um beaded jewelry mostly um, glass and crystal jewelry at a local farmer's market with one of my friends and that was my first job it was my first experience of retail and customer service um but my knowledge of jewelry making and um, the more technical aspects of it and how to really create like beautiful high-end jewelry um, wasn't really developed until I had that internship or yeah it was like an informal internship so that was another like amazing experience so I apologize if all of this seems really disjointed but really what I'm doing is I can tell that a lot of your questions relate to where my internal motivation comes from what struggles I've been through and my upbringing and I feel like I could do a much better job of telling this in a more linear way but Either way, I'm telling this in a way that's natural to me and that highlights all of the experiences that I had that were either very difficult or um, very formative. I'm trying to make this look nice, but I feel like a box would have been necessary to do that. Can I make the best of it, guys? Um, and I think the last question I'm really going to answer is what do I do when um like nowadays when things don't go my way or i feel down or something has gone wrong and the answer is that all of the experiences that i've told you about have taught me to just persevere maybe take a break from whatever it is that's going wrong if that's possible um and try and really like see the glass half full because I feel like with so many experiences I've gone through you can paint yourself as a victim and um, see it as the end point of something or you can see it as the beginning of something and a way to grow and I've really tried to take the second route and I think you can cry about some things or laugh about them not with everything some things are just purely terrible and heartbreaking but with some things you can um you can cry about it or you can laugh about it I'm almost done wrapping yay that's what chatting will do for you it makes the time go by hey so thanks for hanging out with me guys and Christmas wrapping with me I hope that um, I answered most of your questions and if I didn't then we'll do a Q&A at some point where I will. I have the most comfortable curly poodle pillow right now. She doesn't mind guys like she voluntarily put herself here and I'm not leaning very hard but oh yes this is why she wants to sit there because it's access to my face. Look at my mom's craftiness. So I have to say, I know how to make most things that you make, but this is a total mystery to me. There's some kind of batter that you create that includes potatoes, and then they cr like it's made into these crazy delicious fritters that are just like the most sinful, tasty thing ever. And you haven't made these for like ten oh, years, yeah. <laughs> like forever. I'm so excited. What are you gonna do with these profiteroles? Yes. Oh, okay. Because apparently it's like the same base. 
Weird, right? Anyway. You have a silk pad too, and it's a Martha Stewart silk pad. Yes. How did you get a Martha Stewart silk pad? I'm Me obsessed too. with her. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Mine is just like the original silk pad. There's no Martha Stewart to it. Cheers, everyone. I'm going to say goodnight now. My mom and I are starting Christmas movie time. We're watching um, Home Again, which is just a movie with terrible reviews with Reese Witherspoon in it. But it's a rom-com, and those are hard to find nowadays. So with a little champagne, it will be much improved. And I will see you guys after Santa comes. Lady, did Santa come? Did Santa come for you? I think he did, because I can see a lot of presents with your name on them. Look what I got, guys. I'm so excited. Only my wonderful mommy would think to get me a toy. <laughs> Adult supervision required. It's gonna hatch soon, I think. So I wanted to make sure to capture its birth. <laughs> look at this glittery egg, it's so fabulous. Lady, look. Tilt the egg it's alive. play with me. This is like Jurassic Park. Yeah, you can tilt it and then you can play with it. And then if you touch it, it will tap back. Oh, if you tap on it, it taps back. Oh, it does. <laughs> Pick me up and all the bottom of my egg to wake me up. So you have to do that to wake it up. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's its eyes. See, look, it's flashing. You like your Christmas donut? Hmm? Should we make a Christmas donut for Lady? Merry Christmas, everyone. I feel like I haven't said hello properly yet today, but I just wanted to spend Christmas morning as is traditional with my mom and open presents together, including presents for Lady. So excited about my Hatchimal, guys. I put it to sleep in my bed, but here's the box and it should look something like this cartoon. I think you can see the options on the side and it's gonna be glittery and sparkly, but I'm not sure when it's gonna decide its due date is. So it might hatch today and then you'll see it. This bag has lived here for a long time, but I've never really filmed it, I don't think. So it's a limited edition Hawaii never full and my mom got me a charm for it. Look how cute it is. It's a little Tory Burch penguin and he's got a furry belly. Super, super cute. And then my mom got me a crystal Hershey's Kiss dish, which we've put a little candle in temporarily, but you could put little candies in it or jewelry. It's pretty multi-purpose. Honest way to do it is to show you this. So inside the Chanel bag, I haven't really actually wrapped any of this, but we did get presents for a fifth person. So we have my mom, me, Joe, and Lady. Of course, Joe's presents are still under the tree until tomorrow. Um, but there's one more present receiver this Christmas. I feel like I want you guys to try and guess, but I'm gonna tell you, of course. What do you think it is? Maybe if I open this, I can tell. Let's look at the messages. Play, eat, nap, repeat. The other fortune cookies say, your future is fishy. I feel like you guys are guessing now. For, third one says, hiss less per more. Okay, now you guys know. <laughs> and the fourth one says it's playtime, just so you know. And these all have like a very strong catnip smell. They're like, again, handmade toys from Etsy. Let me show you the other things in the bag and then I'll give you some more info. From my mom, we have a laser pointer, a must for any developing feline. We have a tiny little collar with little moons. This is a toy I've never seen before that my mom got. It spins. Catnip pizza, also from Etsy. Those are all from the same vendor as um, Lady's Toy. And little goldfish. Are they cute? <laughs> I think that's it. Well, that is a lot of toys for a little fuzzy creature that I haven't physically met yet, but will soon, um, the weekend of January 13th. We will be bringing home this little creature. I'm gonna insert the photos better, but I, I just wanna hold them up. It feels like I'm show, like showing a friend, guys. I've been doing this um, with friends and family, showing them her photo just recently. It has not been that long at all that I found her online. And so let me show you the photo that stole 
my heart and as soon as I saw it I knew I was ready I can't explain it some things in life are just like that I looked at other photos of cats and nothing really clicked for me until I saw her and we've now decided on her name her name is going to be Bianca Mittens and here's the first photo I ever saw of her if you can see that and underneath it still says available because that is the actual photo I saw on the breeders website so they're just like a couple and they you know breed a few cats a year they don't have very many at all and just her little face I fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. it was love at first sight that feeling happens rarely in life doesn't it you just know um, as soon as I saw her um, I just really clicked with her and I think she's so adorable she is a ragdoll I considered adopting but I really really wanted another ragdoll and I wanted Joe to have the experience of having a kitten as well so those things together did mean that I decided to get a cat from a breeder so I hope that you guys excuse the plane I hope that you guys can respect that and be okay with it. Um, it's just a personal decision that everybody has to make and this is the decision that I made um, as much as I could make one because it was a little bit of an emotional decision for sure. Um, I kept thinking that I wasn't ready yet and I wanted to give myself some more time to grieve for Fufu um, but as soon as I saw her photo and I saw lots of other photos of cats online um, I just knew that I was ready to be a cat mom again so I hope that you guys will welcome her into our online family I'm so excited to get her she is like the best Christmas present of all and I'm just so excited to give her a loving home because um, you know with Fufu and everything I really do know what I'm taking on and I feel very comfortable with it and I'm very excited for Joe to experience it from the beginning because he has never had a pet um, really at all um, other than Fufu who was at the end of his life when they met. Just can't wait to play with her and bring her home and introduce her to you guys. So the reason for her name of course I think it speaks for itself probably. Jo actually came up with the name Bianca because she is mostly like a creamy white. Ragdoll kittens are born white and then they develop their markings later on and then the mittens um, of course because she will be a mitted ragdoll and that's actually how I found the breeder so I knew that Rachel had a mitted ragdoll and I was really curious about that because that's a different marking than Fufu had and so I just you know did a little bit of research and that's how it happened on this breeder so the fact that she she's mitted is also kind of how I found her so I wanted to include that in her name and I think she's gonna be so cute with little white mittens and just so beautiful ragdolls are amazing cats if you're wondering why you know I specifically wanted a ragdoll cat I do have my reasons which is that Fufu was just such an amazing temperament and um, they're just amazing cats. They're really, really wonderful breeds. So I was so happy with Fufu that, you know, it's a big commitment to make. It's like a 15 plus year commitment, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I just really wanted another ragdoll. And at first it didn't quite feel right because I felt like I was replacing Fufu but then um, as soon as I saw her photo it didn't feel like that anymore it felt like she was already part of the family and it said available on her photo but I didn't want to quite believe it until I heard back from the breeder but I knew it's like I knew when I saw the photo she was already mine I know that sounds crazy and insane but I knew and so yeah it was amazing to have that feeling and to find her and look at the cute tissue paper that the Etsy seller included isn't that darling all right my mom is making a very delicious Christmas treat in the kitchen so I thought we would go ahead and do the giveaway winner for the Louis Vuitton PM agenda um, if you guys discovered the video then you know about this it's a secret little advent calendar like giveaway I do every year for vlogmas but over 2,000 entries which is amazing that's def definitely like the highest amount I've ever had I think so yeah um, let me click it's just like loading all of the comments now and then I just have to click for it to pick a random winner the winner is Jessica Stern let me show you the screen it's randompommentpicker.com decides um, so here's the winner if it will focus 
So congratulations, Jessica. I'm just gonna find her comment um, on YouTube. So I've got all the comments loaded on a page here so that I can let her know that she won. So you haven't seen too much of my mom this morning yet because she's been making these. They look insane, mom. I can't believe you made all of it from scratch. The chocolate, the puff, and the creme pâtissier pastry cream filling. I cannot wait to eat this, but first. Try your nose. Christmas. <laughs> there, look there, not me. <laughs> she doesn't look the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's coming, it's coming. Come see, come see. Come on, keep going, little Hatchimal. Yes. <gasps> Is that its beak? Yeah, but we can see it now. I would be so upset if it hatched while I'm away, so I've tucked it away. There we go, so you don't get cold. Good night, little Hatchimal. Lady is socializing with all the guests. Been here a couple of hours, just enjoying the sand and the sun. It's getting a little overcast and windy though, so I thought I would kind of give you guys one last view of beautiful Kahala Beach this vlogmas because I'm gonna go home and just start editing like crazy because I'm obviously combining yesterday and today's vlog and so it's gonna be um, quite a bit of editing and I want to make sure I get that video up for you guys on Boxing Day. I don't know about you but I tend to play Boxing Day really chill like I don't actually do any shopping so It'll be a nice thing to have up on YouTube, I think, for that day. Lady has paid her respects. <laughs> this is her favorite place. Mm, so many fans, lady. Well, so many people missing that book. That's true, yeah. yeah. So we have pretty much come full circle. I'm back in my pajamas again, just like I was at the very beginning of Vlogmas. And we're pretty much at the end of things, guys cute Christmas donut. Are you enjoying your Christmas donut? Yeah? Um, and I wanted to show you my mom's other like chocolatey things. These are the gifts I got for her. There's three of them and two of them are already on her handbag so I'll show you those. They're from a company called Q-Pot that's Japanese and they used to have a store at the Alamoana in um, Honolulu but unfortunately that closed so we thought it was gone forever but I found the site it's partly in Japanese but it's still understandable and they ship internationally and they make the most beautiful very kitschy bag charms but the attention to detail on them is amazing like everything looks real and in real life it's really shiny like icing would be and then the other one I got her is a chocolate covered orange and you can just see the attention to detail like the piece of orange looks just like a real one from a chocolate shop would. I think that's pretty much it for vlogmas, you guys. I feel sad to say goodbye. It's always just like a bit of a sudden goodbye, but it's always really au revoir because I see you again shortly in another video. This time it's gonna be very shortly because I do have that lookbook coming out of all of my favorite outfits um, from this trip. And then after that, I will be taking a little bit of a well-deserved break and then I'll have some new videos coming out in the new year. So I will see you all then. Thank you so much for watching watching Vlogmas and supporting it. I've really appreciated your enthusiasm in all of the comments. It's been amazing. I know Lady has loved the attention. Bye from little Christmas Poodle. You wanna say goodbye? You wanna lick goodbye? Oh, there we go. You guys have been slurped and that means it's the official goodbye and end of Vlogmas. Bye. James oh, is back. <laughs> You think this is it? Oh man. <laughs> so she's supposed to get out of the hay. <gasps> oh my god, is this it? Is this it? Yeah, I think so. <gasps> Come on, you can do it. You can do it, little Hatchimal. It's so cute. Look how cute she is, lady. You want to meet Hachimo? Hachimo.
Lady likes it. <laughs> she likes it. <laughs> Welcome to the world, little Hachi Mall. Good job. Good job. Ah, voilà, elle est partie faire d'autres.